My husband had a dream of making it big as a rock musician. I was managing our living expenses and funding his promotional activities. I even covered $3,000 for his father's caregiving cost every month at his request. However, there was no sign of him succeeding at all. On top of that, he started slacking off on his music career. Whenever I tried to discuss it with him, he got defensive, insisting I only needed to listen to whatever he said. It was becoming a struggle to continue our life like that. I decided to at least ask my mother in law to spare me the caregiving expenses. Oh, but my husband passed away 10 years ago. Right after hearing that, my husband's diabolical betrayal became evident. I'm Sadie, 37 years old. I work for an event company handling various types of clients. Two years ago, I married Keith, who is 10 years younger than me. My friends were quite concerned when I told them the big news. I understand why, given the age difference. Still, I was adamant to marry him. We're currently living in an apartment together. Unfortunately, we still don't have any children. While we were dating, we never had any big fights. We got along so well. So, initially, I thought our married life would work out just fine. I was in for a rude awakening. Keith was an indie rock band member, mostly performing at local live houses and regional music festivals. He was working hard to become famous through his music. Since he couldn't make a living solely from the band, he juggled multiple part time jobs. We met when I helped out at one of his shows. His dedication to music was so inspiring that. I felt compelled to back him up. I anticipated we might not have much in common due to the age difference, so I intended to interact with him in a more business like manner. Yet, while managing his band, he started making direct advances towards me. At first, I thought he was just teasing me, but he was actually serious and Poured his feelings into me. Sadie, you know I like you a lot. Why don't you give me a chance? I was surprised by his direct approach. You're kidding, right? I'm 10 years older than you. Someone as cool as you could easily find young and pretty girls. In reality, he was a wild looking, handsome guy and had quite a few female fans. On the other hand, I was a plain Jane and had been so absorbed in work that I missed my prime age to find a husband. Not that I had a strong desire to get married, and I actually preferred work over romance. Moreover, my older brother has three kids, so my parents never pressured me to get married. I thought it was some kind of mistake for a good looking guy like him. To have feelings for me. But he persistently expressed his love and didn't give up. I don't care about fans who are only interested in my appearance, not my music. I prefer mature women like you, who respect and support my dream sincerely and are capable at work. Seriously, marry me. As I observed his earnest demeanor, I gradually started to see him as a man. We dated for a short while, and after much consideration, I decided to marry him. I resolved to support him in pursuing his dreams when we got married. We didn't have enough money for a wedding, so for the time being, we had an intimate ceremony at the city hall. After that, Keith rolled into my apartment, and we started living together. My parents lived on the opposite side of the country. And he couldn't afford to go meet them. We talked about 
visiting each other's family once we had a bit more breathing room. Then, shortly after we got married, he wanted to discuss something with me. Actually, my dad got paralyzed in an accident a while back. He needs caregiving, but I can't go back that often. And my mom's getting old and can't move around much either. Oh no, that sounds tough. Is there something I can do? Yeah, well, his care costs $3,000 a month. I've been cutting corners to make ends meet so far, but I'm reaching my limit. I'm really sorry, but honey, could you pitch in the three grand each month? I was a bit taken aback by the request. My take-home salary was about 3000 and he made about 1500 Sending my entire salary each month would have left us with just enough for rent. Seeing me lost in thought, he suddenly grabbed my hand. Honey, I'm really counting on you. My parents have been supporting my dream. Doing nothing about this won't sit right with me. I'll work hard to become famous. Please. I decided to tough it out at his desperate plea. All right, but if it comes out of my income, we won't be able to sustain ourselves. So for now, I'll use my savings. You've got to pay it back sometime, though. Thanks, love. I'll definitely pay it back. Heck, if I make it big, I'll spoil you rotten. Just to be safe, I made him sign a promissory note. Even though we were married, I thought it would have been better to handle those things properly. Paying 3000 a month hurt, but I tried to think it was for a good cause. I just hoped his band would become famous soon. Contrary to my wish, he hasn't made any progress after two years. Not only that, he hasn't been promoting his band lately. Furthermore, they don't even get together and practice. He's either lounging at home or using the pocket money I give him to go out somewhere. At first, I thought he might have given up on his dream. If he's not continuing with music, he needs to find another job. When I asked him if he had given up, he insisted he was still pursuing his music career. Despite his words, there's no sign of him restarting band activities at all. One day, I got fed up and complained to him. Hey, can't you just get back into playing shows already? Or at least try some part-time jobs, even short-term? It could be a fresh breath of air, you know? Yeah, maybe. When I'm in the mood. You said that last time, but you've been just chilling without working. If you keep going like this, we're going to be in serious trouble. Just earn a little something, for God's sake. His nonchalance ticked me off and I unintentionally responded in a harsher tone. He glared at me and then got defensive. Shut up. Don't you complain about men's work. I'm just taking a break because I'm in a slump. I'll get back to it when time passes. I was stunned by his sudden burst of anger. He had never been nasty to me since we got married. Anyway, his not working is seriously messing our finances up. My savings are getting low because of the monthly caregiving expense for my father-in-law. Our life will seriously fall apart soon. I did discuss reducing the amount I send with him, but... Cut down the amount? That'll make my dad suffer and make life harder for my mom. Are you planning to abandon my parents? It's not like that at all but we're barely afloat. We can't sustain our life on just my income. Figuring that out is your job as my wife. Reducing the amount is absolutely out of the question. If there's not enough money, you go get a part-time job or something. He furiously stormed back to his room after that. I was at a loss about how to deal with his absurd demands. His troublesome behavior doesn't end there. Lately, he says he's going out with friends and comes back pretty late. It's not uncommon for him to return in the dead of night or sometimes not even contact me and just come back in the morning. 
When he returns home, he reeks of alcohol and perfume. When I ask him where he's been, he says he's been out playing around and drinking at bars. Okay, if it's just him drinking too much, I can understand the alcohol smell. But what's with the strong scent of perfume? I ask him to at least let me know where he's going, but he just won't listen. Don't complain about my hangouts with my buddies. I just happened to get that perfume smell at the bar. Don't go jumping to conclusions. He got upset when I mentioned the perfume. However, his eyes were looking all over the place, and he was sweating, so it was crystal clear he was lying. He used to be sweet when we first got married, but now, there's not a trace of it left. In fact, I feel like he's treating me more like a cash cow than anything else. Divorce crosses my mind, but there's also the matter of the caregiving fees I've paid so far. I still have the promissory note, but will I get it back after the divorce? I have no choice but to consult with my in-laws, so while he's away, I decided to call him. When I cleaned his room, I found a notebook with phone numbers written on it. It was old school, which is why it made a strong impression on me. While he's out, I go into his room and dial the number written in the notebook. Then, a woman's voice answers. Hello, who is this? Oh, hi, um, this is Sadie. You don't know me. Is this Miss Florence, Keith's mother? Um, yes. I explained to her that I'm his wife. She sounds really surprised since she hasn't received any news from him. I never thought he could get married. He's lazy and always talks about becoming a rock star. I'm really sorry for the delayed update. He was earnest in pursuing me. And well, I'm quite a bit older than him. I feel kind of guilty, so I blurted that out like an excuse. Then I bring out the issue of caregiving expenses. Um, he asked me to pay $3,000 each month for his father's care. But because he's not working, my savings are about to run out. Is it okay to reduce the amount? When I nervously ask her, she becomes dead silent on the other end. And then, before I send something back, she drops a bombshell on me. Um, my husband. He passed away ten years ago. Anyway, Keith has been estranged from the family for years, and we haven't been in touch. What? His father is gone? And he's been estranged? I'm sorry, could you please explain a bit more? After talking with her, I discover one shocking truth after another. I've been deceived by him all this time. I'm trembling with rage. All the effort I put into supporting his dream has been for nothing. I will not let him get away with this. I'll make sure he pays for what he's done. A few days after the call with my mother-in-law, Keith was out late again. Normally, I'd be worried about where he'd been, but now I honestly feel relieved because I'm not interrupted in my preparations. When he returns, just as I finish my task, he widens his eyes as he looks around the room. Then, he starts yelling at me. Hey, what the heck are you doing? Don't touch my stuff without permission. I stare at him coldly. You need to get out of this apartment, and we're getting a divorce. You'll be hearing from my lawyer soon. What the heck? You can't just say that out of the blue. What the heck do you think you're doing? I know exactly what I'm doing, but do you? What have you done with the $3,000 I've been paying every month for your dad's care, which you lied about? He freezes at my question, so I tell him about contacting his mom. Without giving him a chance to say a word, I question him about his dad's passing and his estrangement due to repeated misdemeanors like shoplifting. His face turns pale and desperately tries to come up with excuses. N no it's not like that at all. Um, oh, you know, I was buying band equipment. It was pricey, so I was hesitant to tell you. It's for work, so it's fine, right? I'm disgusted by his pathetic excuse at this point. 
Even if that is true, the fact remains that he lied and deceitfully took money from me each month. And especially because it was all built on lies, there's no way I could forgive him. I'm not up for vague excuses. You used the money I gave you on your affairs, right? I've got proof, and it's all been checked. His notebook listed a bunch of women's phone numbers. When I called them all up, five women confirmed they were involved romantically with him. They were all lied to about him being single. When I confront him about this, he turns red as a beet and becomes enraged. He even tries to attack me. At this moment, a sharp scream comes from the back room. Enough! An outpour, a bunch of women. The color on his face goes from red to white in a second. They're all his mistresses, he deceived, and all gathered at my request. They looked like they were ready to unleash hell, especially since some of them were seriously considering marriage. They pounce on him, shouting, You jerk! and you scumbag, as they tower around the cowering Keith. The outnumbered women, fueled by anger, are like a force to be reckoned with. Amid this chaos, Keith's groveling, crying out, Please stop, I messed up, I'm sorry. Once they have enough of him, each of them spits out, I'll never forgive you, and we're done, and storms out one by one. He's left in a sorry state, completely stunned. I lay it on even thicker and tell him straight up. Just so you know, I'm demanding alimony for the infidelity, and you're paying back the total $70,000 I've paid in caregiving expenses. I've got the paperwork, so there's no running away. He suddenly looks at me and begs on his knees. Please, honey, please don't divorce me. I'll pay back the money over time, and I'll change my ways and work seriously. Please, don't leave me. His pleas fall on deaf ears at this point. I feel nothing but annoyance. Are you kidding me? After lying and stealing money from me, you're saying this now? Using your deceased father as an excuse is despicable. Now I understand exactly why your mom disowned you. Please don't say that. I'm really remorseful. It's too late for me to believe that now. I never want to see your face again. I'll contact you through my lawyer, so get the heck out of my apartment right now. If you don't leave, I'm calling the police. I kick him out right then and there. After that, I successfully divorced Keith and collected the money he deceitfully took from me and alimony through my lawyer. When I threatened to fight in court if he didn't pay, he quickly transferred the full amount into my account. It seems like he racked up some debts somewhere. Moreover, he scammed two out of the five women he had an affair with. They came after him too, but he couldn't afford any more debts. He turned to his estranged mother for help, begging for mercy. I heard that even though she disowned him, she didn't want him causing trouble for others. So, she lent him to pay them back. In return, she sent him to work day and night on a deep sea fishing boat owned by her relative until he paid off his debts. He's probably getting tossed around in rough waters and being worked rigorously right about now. On the other hand, I've got my money back, plus alimony, so I'm living a carefree single life. I'm hoping to meet someone sincere next time around.